Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am joined by Jamie Beckler, who is up in Ohio. How are you doing, Jamie? Hey, I'm doing real well, John. I appreciate you having me on the show. Uh, doing good work and I look forward to uh, talking with you a little bit today. Absolutely. And Jamie is the host of Success is a Choice podcast and the author of three books, including The Bus Trip. He spent 20 years as a college basketball coach and a high school AD. And now you work with high level corporations and sports teams, helping them maximize their potential in the area of leadership, culture and teamwork. And what we wanted to talk today about is character, character building. And I think this is a subject that you don't hear enough of uh and that people kind of it's almost it almost sounds anachronistic at this stage it's like character building as you may because most people most of us who are old enough you always know like every time you, anything ever happened people always told you well that's character building isn't it anything negative was always character building stuff but um but jamie um just first of all say why why is character building still really really important well, I think it's a great question. And yeah, I, I grew up in the same way, you know, oh, that'll build character. That'll build character. It's like, well, I want to stop building character for a minute and uh, have nothing bad happen to me or, or stop screwing up. But, you know, I, I think the character part of whatever we do matters in terms of the character is your values. That That's the integrity. That's the kind of the foundation, the the rock so to speak that you can stand on. You know, when 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 the the storms of life are hitting, you know, and, and you have a little shaky character or, or you haven't developed your character or you have a, a you know, kind of a, a suspect character. Well, then you might be like a tumbleweed, you know, out west in the in the Texas, you know, uh, panhandle or whatever. You know, when the wind blows, the tumbleweed goes this way. And if the wind blows another way, the, the tumbleweed goes another way. And we don't want to be like that. We want to have a, a firm foundation. And so I really think character is, is that thing that can get us through the ups and the downs. You know, most people, uh, and we alluded to it, you know, uh, it builds character. You know, when something bad happens or we do something bad, well, that's when your character really shows up. But it also shows up when you're successful, too. Mm -hmm. And there's plenty of times where we experience the highs, the ups. Uh, you know, we're, we're at the, the mountain peak and, and maybe if we don't have very good character, we don't handle it very well. And maybe we don't stay there very long. So I really think that character piece is, is huge, whether you're talking business or you're talking, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of work with sports teams, whether you're talking business or whether you're talking sports, whether you're talking family, uh, you know, whether you're talking how you deal with your neighbor, how you deal with your team members, your, your coworkers. Uh, your relatives at a family reunion, it doesn't matter, you know, what kind of character do you have? And, and are you somebody that's going to be quick to, to hate on somebody if they disagree with you? Are, are you going to be quick to uh, crumple, you know, like a piece of paper when we crumple it yeah. up and throw it away at the first sign of adversity? Or are you going to stand firm and, and steadfast? And so I do think character is a huge part of, of our life. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And I love what you were just saying there about the fa the foundation, because you're know, without a without knowing your value system or without even thinking about these things, you can live a pretty root rootless life. Um, rootless, not ruthless. Maybe <laughs> maybe it turns into ruthless. I don't know. <laughs> That's right. But uh, but but you're correct because I mean, without without those foundations to fall back on, then uh, you know you're always going to you're always going to drift. And to be honest, at the end of the day. It, whether it's in business or personal life, that shows through. So uh, at the end of the day, people don't relate well to chameleons. I mean, chameleons are great pets, not so great when you're dealing with them in business. Yeah. And, and you know, if you have kind of suspect character, if, if you're like that tumbleweed I talked about, where whichever mm -hmm. way the wind blows, that's which way you go, you know, you might experience short term success. You know, yeah. you see this all the time with what you do working with salespeople and, and business people, you know, you can experience some short term success, but sometimes people ruin long term sales or ruin long term sustainability mm -hmm. with their business because they go for that quick buck. Uh, and it's the same way in sports. You see it all the time. People will take, you know, the low character kids or the, the kids that are really at risk kids and, and they just don't care. And they'll, they'll take whatever they can for the talent just to win right now. And then that right. hurts their program eventually. And so I, I do think if I think most of us at the end of the day want to have sustainable success, we want to be successful 
for the long term, not just, you know, a one hit wonder, so to speak. And, uh, you know, I think that's where that character, that that rock, you know, if we have some kind of a foundation and, you know, are we respectful? Do we have integrity? Are we going to do what's right regardless of the situation? You know, are we going to am I going to respect John even if I don't agree with what John is saying, but I respect his his ability to have that thought or I respect his him for all the other thoughts that he has. You know, I disagree with you on this idea, but I'm going to respect that you've thought it out. Um, and, and, you know, I try to tell my my 11 year old all the time, you know, be kind to everybody, respect everybody, whether they deserve it or not, because it's a sign of of your character not the Mm -hmm. other person's character. And, and if I act like a fool or if I treat you bad because you're being bad, well, then I'm no better than you. You know, the Mm -hmm. old saying, never wrestle with a pig in the mud because (laughs) both of you get dirty, but one of you likes it. (laughs) I love that. I I haven't heard that. Yeah. You know, so, so we need to be respectful. We need to be kind. We need to have integrity, even if no one else around us is doing that, because that's a sign of who we are and we want to be better than a situation that we're in. Yeah. And let's face it, uh, uh, Jamie. I mean, that's the toughest thing about character, isn't it? It's, it's easy to be of great character when the going is, is nice and smooth. It's when you have to stand alone is when it really kicks into gear. And so when you work with when you work with business people or even and teams and athletes and stuff, how do you help them to to develop this found this character foundation? Yeah, one of the very first things, you know, I, I wish I did this all the time real well as a coach, but good coaches ask good questions. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that we try to do is we try to ask whether we're working with a, a teenager on a sports team, or we're working with a millionaire, you know, a 50 year old millionaire, it doesn't matter. We try to ask questions to see what makes them tick, where their mindset is at, what their goals are, what they really want and what's important to them. You know, those kind of things, because oftentimes their answers are then going to allow us the freedom to then talk about character and talk about some of these skills that maybe they're not thinking about because they're not boom up in your face. You know, Mm -hmm. they're not the X's and O's of sports or the X's and O's of business. Um, You know, the, the logistical things that they think about on a day-to-day basis. And so, you know, if, if we're talking to somebody, whether it's you, John, or whether it's uh, you know, John is a 16 year old, you know, we're going to find out what, what's important to you. And oftentimes, you know, you're going to say, I want to be respected, or I want people to, to uh, admire me, or I want to be thought of in a good way, or I want to do well as a team, you know, if I'm a member of a team, or I want to experience some success. And then we talk about, you know, these are some ways that that you can actually reach your goals and experience that success, you can, if you have this character, if you're respectful, if you're hardworking, if you have integrity, then your teammates are going to uh, follow you a little bit more. They're, you're going to have influence. And we talk about, I talk, we talk a lot about leadership, but I think leadership and our society gets a, uh, uh, it has, there's a misconception of leadership sometimes. And, and certain, mm-hmm. I'm going to throw the politicians out right now. And yeah. we'd like to throw some of them out literally yeah, I'm but, say, but i'm gonna like a good plan to me <laughs> I, I don't think politicians are leaders to be honest no. um no, no, no. Or, or very good leaders but but most positional leaders is who we look at that's a leader all right that's the ceo that's the manager mm-hmm. the supervisor the politician the coach the teacher those are the leaders the thing is i i think that that's just a position that's just a title and, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're a good leader. True leadership is where you're influencing people to do yeah. what's right and to do something good. So, so, you know, John and I, you know, you and I don't have titles. We don't have fancy business cards, but we're in the break room talking or we're around the water cooler. Yeah. More can be done for the culture of our organization by you and I talking good or bad, or we bring in two other people into this discussion. More can be done for our culture than any memo or email or poster or picture that the manager or the supervisor puts up on a wall in that break room. And so, but we don't have a title. We don't have a position, but we're influencing one another, either good or bad. And and I think of it, and I talk to a lot of the teams I work with, I think of it like uh, leadership in terms of the influence, like the wave at a big sporting event. Yeah. yeah, No, and none of us have really been to many sporting events lately. 
But when we would go to these big sporting events, they do the wave and you never hear them say, all right, we're going to start in section 23. You know, yeah. they don't come over the loudspeaker. It's always one Yahoo deciding <laughs> he wants to do the wave and then he gets his buddy to do it. And then another buddy does it and someone mm. else does it. And section after section. And before you know it, there's 80,000 people doing the wave. And, and, mm -hmm. and nobody knows if it was the tallest, the shortest, the prettiest, the ugliest, richest, poorest, famous, least famous person mm -hmm. in the stadium. It's just some random person got somebody else one to one to one to one. And I really think that's that's really important when we're looking at changing a culture, changing a world, being a good leader, being a good influence, because that all circles back to the character bit. And you yeah. said something interesting, John, you said that, you know, sometimes we're afraid to be that one person to stand up mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Well, oftentimes it just takes that one person to yeah. then get somebody else who was thinking about it, but was scared, but they were waiting for that one person. So if you can be that one person to do the wave, to start the wave, that person next to you was wanting to do it, just didn't have the courage. And now they have the courage. You can't always change everything or everyone, but you can always do something and, and affect somebody. And, and so yeah. that's where that influence comes in, I think. And, and I love I love what you said there about the leadership component, because really, at the end of the day, is what you're saying is that we all have the capacity to be leaders, regardless of where we sit in the hierarchy of any organization or anything. We can be leaders through example and how we operate. You often see on teams, right, in sports teams, you may have a captain. I mean, like, you know, I follow soccer and stuff, you know, but you have a captain of the team. But you'll often hear the, the pundit say, x and y or this guy here or that person there they're real leaders on the field now they're not the captains but they're leaders yeah or in the locker room or yeah. in the back of the bus or in the cafeteria yeah. or you know and and you know we see these these big national political you know elections and stuff and and we get bent out of shape about president or a senator or a governor but you know how i treat john as my neighbor or my coworker, what I do with the person I pass on the sidewalk, that's going to do more for my community to a degree, um, you know, than, than any big time election, you know, the, the little influences I have in my community and the way that I can make things better. You know, uh, my son and I, every Saturday morning, we'll go out where we we're on a town square in a small town, we're on a town square and there's a, a really nice Lake in the middle of mm -hmm. this square. And we'll walk around that and pick up trash every Saturday. Right. And, you know, we will start seeing other people doing that at other parts of the day during the week. And my son will be like, are they doing that because they saw us? And I'm like, I don't know, Jalen, but that might be, it might've yep. just been, we might've encouraged them to do that. And so, you know, what we do in our neighborhood, what we do in our business, you know, uh, what we, what we talk about, what I talk about to John around the water cooler can be huge for, for making, him better at his work, me better at my work, and our work just in general better. Yeah, and listen, Jamie, I mean, you just touched on something that's so incredibly important for people to understand, and that is that idea of the things you do matter and how you show up matters and that you should always be thinking about, okay, well, how am I, how am I projecting to the rest of the world? Oh, 100%. And, and we, we fall into that trap. Well, I'm, I'm just one person. What can I do? Well, you're right. You might just be one person and you might not have a lot of influence, but there's somebody that you can influence. You know, I've never met, I've never really never met anybody that doesn't have an associate or a friend, you know, some, or, or some relative, you know, you have somebody in your life that you can influence. And maybe that person has somebody in their life they can influence and so on and so forth. And it's a, it's a ripple effect, but it's got to start somewhere. And it's got to be John saying, all right, I'm going to do what I can. I can't be the president. I can't be the governor. I can't maybe be the CEO of this fortune 500 company or whatever, but I can do something, you know, in the same way with Jamie, Jamie can't be this, but I can do something. I can be this over here and I can influence these two people. And, you know, we'll talk about, I'll, I'll work with, you know, a, a basketball team and there'll be a freshman at the end of the bench that thinks, well, I can't do anything. I'm not playing. I'm just a freshman. Yeah, but the person sitting next to you is a freshman. And you can influence one another to stand and cheer for people, to be the ones to start waving the towel on the bench and get everybody excited. Yeah. That uh -huh. enthusiasm is contagious. So you can do something. 
Yeah, and and but I I just want to underline and maybe finish on that idea of community and and taking things down to a, a local level because I think that's incredibly important. I think if you if you be the best person you can in business, the best person, best partner, best parent, whatever it is, uh, and as you said, neighbor in your community, you are making a difference to the world. If you sit around pontificating about macro issues over which you have pretty much zero control um yeah that's fun to do maybe but it's it's kind of a pointless exercise oh a hundred percent and we and we could go over a lot of different areas but you know you know we want we want to you're right talk about these big huge macro issues but what are we doing in our own community Mm -hmm. you know are we making a difference are we volunteering our time are we donating something are we getting involved in the school systems you know, are, are we picking up trash Are you know, there's so many little things that we can do in our life that we don't end up doing because we're spending all of our time watching the news and complaining about this yeah. macro issue when we could be actually doing something that makes a difference, at least in our own community. Yeah, exactly. And tweeting something out or going on next door or whatever and, and complaining about things isn't actually <laughs> making a difference. All right. Well, listen, Jamie, this has been fantastic. All of Jamie's information will be below this video. Uh, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, you know, I was a longtime college basketball coach and a, and a high school athletic director. And, and now I work primarily with sports teams, but, but I, I do work with businesses um, to help them with their leadership, their culture having better teammates, no matter what it is, whether it's sales, uh, whether it's just a, a banking industry or, or sports teams, like I say, at all different levels, including the professional level and, uh, you know, written some books. And we just try to, to make a difference wherever we're at, um, you know, and that, that's, what it, that's what matters to me. Um, we, you know, I loved being a coach, but uh, I, I love being able to reach a, a wider audience. And so, uh, you know, if, if, if you've got some twits listening, if you've got some people on Twitter that, that like to get on Twitter, I'm at coach Beckler on Twitter and they can also find me at coachbeckler.com and they can find a podcast and books and all that kind of stuff there. Perfect. Uh, listen again. Uh, thanks, Jamie, Jamie Beckler. Uh, my name is John Golden sales, pop online sales magazine, pipeline, your CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.